Hello, good morning, good, e good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Vishakha Bhave from EXACT. Um, we'll give just one more minute for folks to trickle in and get started. So we'll wait for another minute. Thank you. Chandni, can you hear me well? Yes, Vishak, I can hear you. And you can see my shared content? Yeah, I can see the PowerPoint with the title full screen. Thank you. All right, folks, good morning and good afternoon. A warm welcome to all of you for part nine of this series of PRISM by module webinars. Today, uh, the topic of the webinar is faculty and faculty module. I am Vishakha Bhave. I'm the VP of Product Innovation at EXAT and a former faculty from PCOM School of Pharmacy. Um, joining me today for this presentation is Chandani Parikh, who is one of our client success specialists. Um, she's not only helped me prepare the content of the webinar today, but will also be manning and monitoring the questions and the chat box. A couple of housekeeping announcements before we get started. Um, first things, um, you're all on mute by default through the presentation, but please feel free to put your questions and comments in the questions section. And Chani will bring them up when we make logical breaks for addressing the questions. It's going to be a long webinar, so I will not wait until the end to address the questions, but will be pausing in between the slides. We have uploaded the handouts that I'm using today for my presentation for you to refer to. So feel free to go ahead and download the handout and follow along. I will be switching between the PowerPoint deck as well as taking you through the live system um, to showcase some of the features and functionalities. So I'll be switching between both modes. If you are having problems uh, viewing my content or slides, um, uh, please put it in the chat. Uh, hopefully that will not that should not happen. Uh, we also have a mixed audience from different domains. So physical therapy, a physician assistant, nursing, uh, occupational therapy um, and other health domains. So what you will see is uh, the content that we've prepared as part of this deck is going to be examples uh, from all those different domains. Um, I think those were the initial announcements uh, that I wanted to make. Um, if you have any technical issues, do post it in the chat and we'll try to help out as well. So um, without further ado, I'm going to start. Um, the next few slides, uh, what we're going to do is go through this agenda. So we I've broken up the agenda into four main sections. The first two sections are about um, setup. So how do you set up your faculty users and how do you invite them to the system, to the exact prism system? The second section talks about how do you provide the right kind of data access to your faculty and staff users. And so the first two are from an administrator perspective. You, If you are a program administrator, how do you set up some things so that the, the broader faculty and staff um, members in your program have the correct level of access? And then Agenda number three and four are mainly where we talk about once all that access has been provided, if you are a faculty who has been invited to the system via faculty module, what are the kind of views that you're going to see? What are the different sections? And how would you go about managing all your tasks as a faculty via the faculty module? So that's how we've broken up this whole webinar um, I will pause in between to address any questions you have. Every few slides, I'm going to pause. All right. So, Chani, if you can confirm once again that you're able to see my slide progression. Yes, I'm able to see the module access now. OK, thank you. So uh, before we dive in, I just want to orient you to the different modules that are available for exact prism users and these have been designed keeping in mind the different persona user personas that we have so we have the student users and there is a separate student module through which the students access prism um, 
Then we have the school side users, right? Mainly all of you in the audience today. Um, and for the school side users, we have two modules that we offer. We offer the administrator module or the main module. This is a full access module that will pretty much give you access to all the data that you put in there, including all students, all courses, all placement and learning activity data, and all the contracts and the sites data. So that's the main module here. The second module that we have is a more limited access module, right? And via this module, users get access to specific courses, specific student data, specific um, parts of the system. So they don't by default get access to all the data. And this is designed so that depending on the needs of your program, you can either give your users access to the faculty module with specified amount of data shown to them or to the main module. Now, we uh, have seen programs of different sizes that engage their faculty in different levels or different roles, right? So depending on their need, some programs have said, well, most of our faculty are engaged in all the courses and all the students. So um, we really would want to give all the faculty full administrator access. And so then um, that's fine. All, all faculty can see everything. And then we have some other programs, and these are typically very huge programs who have a very large faculty body, maybe hundreds of faculty, some of which are adjunct faculty or guest faculty, and they really want to specify what access, data access are they providing these users. And they typically make use of this faculty module. So today, through this presentation, um, I'm going to talk to you the first First section is about talking about administrator module and what you as an administrator can do to set up all your faculty and staff users in the system and how do you give them the appropriate access. And then the remainder of the presentation, which is almost 60 to 70% of it, is going to talk about once you give that access, how does your faculty um, go about managing all their tasks in the system. So um, let's begin. How do you add and invite faculty to the system? So as a school administrator, when you log into the main module, you are going to land on this dashboard screen or the home screen, as we call it. And you will see three broad sections. The program section allows you to do a lot of setup, give details about the program, um, set up all your students, onboard them, then you have set up all your faculty and staff users and define your compliance requirements for your stakeholders. The middle section here really allows you to set up all your courses and uh, curriculum mapping. And the right hand side, the placement management really allows you to manage your sites and contracts, manage your placements and all your learning activities. So in this webinar today, we are gonna to focus on the faculty and staff. So once you click on that, it will land you on a faculty and staff grid, just like this. And uh, this is a master list of all the school side users in your program. So it doesn't matter whether they are a faculty, whether they are a staff, whether they have administrator access, uh, their access really doesn't matter. What matters is that irrespective of what role they have in the program, if they are a school side user, you will see their name appear here. And um, during the initial onboarding, when we set you up, when you are onboarding on our exact prism system, our onboarding team, our implementation team will import all your faculty and staff in bulk, and you will readily see this grid populated for you when you start to use the system. However, as you keep using it, you may have more faculty join in, old faculty leaving, and for those, changes if you wanted to quickly go ahead and add the new faculty that have joined your program it's very easy you click on this add faculty and staff button right here and when you click on it you will see a drawer opening you enter the basic details about that faculty first name last name email address you can um, 
by default, they'll be marked as active. But later on, if you have faculty who've left your institution, but you don't want to delete their data, you can just mark them inactive and they just won't populate by default on all the grids. But you can always go back, filter on them and get, get the data if you wanted to. Um, so it's very easy to get the faculty added. Once you have added their basic information, you can always go to the faculty page and change it if need be. When you are adding new faculty, it will give you all these options. It will ask you to add their administrative position, uh, if any. It will also add it. You can also enter the faculty rank. Um, the options that you see here are are their labels and if we provide you with the general labels that are typically used by academic programs, but say, for example, in your program, you do not use the word chair, you rather use the word department head, then feel free to have this customized for you. You just have to raise a simple support ticket and say that please include these three labels and please remove these two labels because we don't use them in our team will customize this list for you so that all your users can then pick the correct uh, designations or the correct correct ranks for them. We do understand that each program may have slightly different labels that they use. So these options are completely customizable. Once you have entered and added them with the bare minimum information, if you wanted to filter the grid and if you only want to look at a certain uh, group of user base, maybe you just want to um, filter on faculty list. If you just wanted to filter on faculty with a particular rank or faculty and staff with particular designation, then you could do that. All those filters are available for you. You can also filter on active or inactive faculty and then get a curated list in this grid right here. So you see this uh, funnel icon, wherever you see this funnel icon, it's for all the filters that are available um, for you to view selected results. Um, I'll also quickly um, acclimatize you to these um, top panel. The nine dots that you see here brings you back to the dashboard. Um, the question mark here is help. So it points you to the help center and you can also raise support tickets from here for any issues. And um, the, uh, the megaphone icon is announcements. Any new announcements from exact um, regarding new releases, you can see from here. Um, and then the three lines on the top left here, we call that as the hamburger menu and that allows you to navigate to a different section in the product. So I can even quickly show it to you on the live system. So here, if you see, this is the navigation. You can hop to any other section of the system quickly from here. Um, this is the dashboard. It will always bring back to the screen. Wherever you are in the product, if you click on this nine icons, it's going to bring back on the dashboard. This is the help center. And this is where you'll find all the new features that are being rolled out. So. Um, make it a habit, so to speak, because we have an evolving product and we are releasing new features every six to eight weeks. Do visit this section. It will give you what are the latest things that you can see in the product for the most recent release. It's a very good way to keep up with the evolving product and the new features. All right. So then um, going back to our, this is the grid that I was talking about. I'm gonna go switch back to our presentation quickly. Um, so once you add the faculty and you, you know how to use the filters, um, another thing is we also have a single sign-on integration. So if you set up single sign-on for all your faculty users, then they do not have to remember different passwords. They can use their university or school username and password and log in into exact. So we do support that. For every user that you see on this grid, 
our product will create a detailed profile page for that particular faculty and staff. So if they want to, they can start populating their continuous professional development activities in there and generate their CVs using that information. Once you are um, ready to, um, you've added all your faculty and staff users, now it's time to invite them to the system. So either our team, our support team can send out bulk invitations for all your faculty and staff at the time of onboarding you, or um, if you have added faculty and staff individually later on and you wanna send out that invite yourself, you can select, you can select those faculty from here and then, um, and then you can click on invite faculty. Once you click on invite faculty, it will open up an email template for you. You pick the recipients and you pick a template that you wanna send them for invitation. We do provide you with a standard invitation template, um, which has a standard language in it. There are merge fields that you can use like the first name, last name, um, the faculty's email and the invitation link, which can be clicked by them to access the system. However, if you want to change this language, you can also add a custom template. So these templates are customizable and you can add your own language by clicking on the uh, create new template. You are also able to preview what you're going to send out to your faculty and you can either send these invitations out right away or you can set it up for a future date and time, right? So you can set up or schedule your email invites to go maybe next Monday, and then you can send it out. So uh, that was about inviting faculty to the system and getting them added to the system. Uh, one point to note is if you choose to use this feature of invite faculty, uh, keep in mind that it will directly invite them and give them access to the faculty module, right? Which is the limited access module. It will not give them access to this main administrator module, which shows everything to them. So um, if you have faculty and staff who you want to give full administrator access, you can do that. You just have to contact support for that. This invite faculty gives them access to the faculty module. So just something to keep in mind. So then the next part is once you have set up um, your faculty uh, users and invited them to the system, then you also want to um, create some resources for them and maybe make some announcements for them, welcoming them to the program or telling them about an important uh, self-study meeting or curriculum meeting that's coming up where their attendance may be required. So we have, we do have in the setup section under faculty and staff, we do have announcements and resources that you can set up and share with your faculty. So under the announcement section, you can add an announcement, you can edit an existing announcement and they'll appear in reverse chronological order. Whatever you set up here, will be available for all your faculty when they log into their dashboard. So I'm going to show you how that's going to look when we come to that section. But this is the setup part when you, where you as an administrator is setting up these announcements and resources. On the bottom panel here, you can see um, you can upload travel policies, accreditation documents, reimbursement policies and forms for their travel any exact provided resources, faculty handbooks, any such resources that you wanna make available for your faculty can be uploaded from here. You can either create faculty category lists, so you can create resource lists, and then within each category list, you can add resources. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy to do. Um, once you have created resources and shared them with the faculty, the next thing is making sure, how do you make sure if you have 20 faculty that you're giving access to via faculty module, that each of those faculty, depending on which courses they are associated with or which students they are mentoring, they are seeing the correct information, right? Because as we mentioned earlier, 
each one of them will see only the data that is shared with them. They will not see all the data that's there on the system. So let's talk a little bit about that and see what governs their views. So there are three levels of data access based on associations, right? Um, that you can provide to your faculty users via the faculty module. The first association is via courses. So if you associate or map your faculty to specific courses, then those faculty are known as course faculty and they will get full access to the data of that course, which means they'll be able to see all the students who have registered for that course. They'll be able to manage all the learning activities for that course. They will be able to contribute to curriculum mapping for that particular course. So they'll be able to map it to the standards and they will be able to build the course content for those courses. Obviously, if they are course managers or course directors, you would want them to do all of that. So they will be able to see all the data for the students registered for that course, right? The second kind of association is when you associate a faculty to a particular student in a role of an advisor or a mentor. If you, for that association, you are giving full access of that student to that faculty. Uh, so all the course activities that the student has performed, this advisor will be able to see. And that's also required so that the advisor can mentor and guide the student on their performance or help them with their academic success. Um, in this particular association, the advisor is able to see the coursework for all the courses for that particular student for their advisee. The third kind of association is when you associate a faculty at a placement level. So this is one placement for one student inside of a course. This is the lowest level of um, data sharing that you can do inside of a course. And we do have programs that have adjunct faculty that help them or even um, their core faculty help them oversee student placements, particular student placements. So marking these faculty as placement faculty will allow those faculty to review learning activities just for that student for that placement. So not all the students of the course, but only that particular placement. Um, and these three tiers of sharing will allow you to safely um, give the appropriate access to your faculty and staff without infringing on HIPAA and FERPA regulations. And they'll still be able to effectively collaborate with each other for either for curriculum management, for accreditation, or for student training. All right, so now let's go ahead and see how these associations are made, right? So if you click on any faculty uh, name from the grid, um, so let me actually go on the live system and show it to you. So this is my faculty grid. If I click on any of um, the faculty names, then I'm going to see, uh, I'll go to their profile page, and here I'm going to see associations. Right. Um, and I'll see associations that this faculty has with courses, students and placements. So if I click on courses, I see a list of courses that this particular faculty is associated with or where this faculty is marked as a course faculty. And they are able to access this courses completely from the faculty module. This is your view as an administrator. When this particular faculty, Cadence Henderson, logs into their account, they will see, they will be able to access all these courses because their administrator has marked them to this, the, this courses as a course faculty. If you wanted to assign more courses to this faculty, you can do it two ways. You can either assign them from here. So you can search up the course and say assign or you could go to the course page and do it from there. So you could, um, let me switch back here. So you can directly assign them from 
this page, assign course, or you could go to the course page. This is the course page. And under course page, on the right, you have faculty and staff associations. You could click the pencil icon and it would allow you to associate a faculty to this particular course, right? So two ways you can do it. You can also, when you are assigning this particular faculty to that course, it's going to ask you, what is the role that this faculty plays with respect to this course? And you again, you see a bunch of options here, course coordinator, course director, you can pick the correct role. Now, again, this list can be customized. So if in your program you use course director instead of course coordinator and you don't, don't want to see course coordinator as one of the options, you can contact support and they will get this list changed for you. So it's as easy as that, but this is customizable. So th that's how you associate or give access to a faculty for their courses. The next association is for um, connecting a faculty with the students in an advisor role. So if you click on students on the left, you will see the uh, five students for which um, Stacy Chapman, who's a faculty, acts as an advisor, right? Again, you can either click on assign student to add more advisees to this faculty, or you could also go on the student page and from here on the right hand side, you see associated staff and faculty. You could also click on the plus icon here and associate the faculty or staff to the student from the student page. So there are again, two ways you can assign them. And what this will do is give that faculty or staff access to the student, the entire student profile along with their clinical course. When you do that, again, the system will ask you that when you're assigning this faculty to the student, what is the role that you want to pick? Is it an academic advisor, clinical advisor, clinical coordinator? What, what role labels do you use in your program? Again, this is customizable. So if you don't see a label that you want to use, contact support and they'll help you out. In the future, we're going to bring all these customization for these role labels in the system itself. So you as an administrator can build a list of the labels that you want to use so that you don't have to depend on support. So this is something that our product teams are working on and it will come in the next few months. All right, the third level of association is placement faculty. So if you want to map this faculty to particular placements and only give them access to placements, then this is a list of all the placements for this faculty. If you wanted to assign more placements, you would go into the placement section of the product and do it from there. Um, so you would click, so this is the placement section and you would click on one of these placements and it would open up a card like this and you would say there is a field called placement faculty. So from here, you would associate the faculty to this particular placement. So um, these are the three ways uh, in which you as an administrator can give appropriate data access to your faculty users. So I'm going to pause here and see if we have any questions that I can address before we move on to the next section, which now talks about the faculty view, the other side of it. So Chandni, are there any questions that I can answer for the audience? Uh, no questions. There was just one about the handout, but it's sorted. So no questions. Sure. So then I'll keep moving in the interest of time. So the next remainder of the slides are all about faculty view. So access to our exact prism system using the faculty module, which remember is the limited access module. So you get to see data based on your associations with courses, associations with students and associations with placements. So let's see what that looks like. So what, when a faculty is invited to the system via faculty module, when they log in, they're gonna land up on a screen that looks like this. This is the dashboard um, that they see. And what you will see here is on the left-hand side, you will see messages from school. So this is the announcement section that um, a few slides ago, I showed how your administrator can post announcements for you. Those are the announcements that you're gonna see here 
on the left hand side. Then you'll see a bunch of tiles here. You can see nine tiles here. And each of these tiles is going to take you to a particular section in the product. We will start with uh, the profile section. So every user who has, who has been added from the school side, whether they are faculty or staff, are going to get a profile section and they can choose if they want to build out that section or not. So let me quickly uh, take you to the live system and show you what that looks like. So um, this is the administrator view. So I'm going to switch to a faculty view. So as if I was a faculty. So if I log in as a faculty, this is the view that I see. This is the live system. And I'm going to click on the profile section. And um, what you'll see here is a, facul a profile for this faculty. You'll see their basic information, their email address, uh, their rank, their um, if they have an administrative title, that will also show her here, show, show, show here. Um, on the left hand side, you will see uh, multiple tabs. These are the tabs that allow you to really put in all your continuous professional activities that you are doing, your achievements under the three umbrellas of teaching, scholarship, and service, um, in addition to the basic profile information. On the right hand side, you have a placeholder for your awards and honors. There is also a way for you to upload your CV or resume if you already have it ready. So let's start one by one. So the basic information really, wherever you see these pencil icons, you can go ahead and edit them, edit information in there. Um, it You can go ahead and modify all these things um, from this drawer. There is also a place where you can create your um, signature, give your alternate email address and more details about you, yourself. Um, you can uh, enter in your education, um, all, of, all of the good stuff, your licensure, your certifications, your um, years of experience, your academic appointments, continuing education, non-academic appointments if you are, um, <clears throat> If you're um, also serving as a consultant, um, if you are volunteering um, outside of academia, all those things can also go in there. Next, you have um, dedicated sections for the three umbrellas that each faculty is typically expected to maintain their portfolio. So we'll start with teaching. Um, this is a section where uh, by default, the system will auto-populate all the courses that you have been marked as a course faculty. But in addition to that, you can go ahead, edit it, change it, right? You can even add in more um, teaching details that you have done, which the system does not populate for you. You can, it's very detailed, so you can play around in the system and uh, you can add in a lot more details for each of your teaching assignment from here. Next uh, is the scholarship section. Again, this is a very detailed section which allows you to note down all your publications um, and whether what kind of publication, is it a book chapter, a journal article, uh, um, is it original research versus um, scholarship of teaching and learning, the citation, you can even upload your publications here if you want to. So it's a very detailed repository to maintain your entire portfolio if you want to um, prepare for your promotion and tenure dossier, this would be a great place to house everything in one place. It, it, other than your scholarly activity, if there are other things in publications that you want to note down, uh, you could do maybe you have um, maybe you have a, a um, you know, um, a channel or a web page that you maintain related to your work, um, where you post out newsletters um, or engage on social media, all of that can also go in here. Um, of course, your research projects and funding also is a very detailed section. Uh, it captures all the attributes, whether it's intramural funding, extramural funding, whether it's a funded or non-funded project and all of that, uh, those bells and whistles are built in here. 
um, you can next go and populate your service activities, whether it's service at a university level, at your program level, whether it's international service, national level service, outside of academia, inside of academia, all of those options are there. It also captures the role that you play in committees, whether you're the chair or vice chair or member of the committee, all those things can be uh, handled here. Once you have populated all these things, our system also provides you with uh, an option to generate a CV. And uh, based on all the details that you've entered, it will generate a CV in Word format. This is a great way if as a program you want all your faculty to have their CVs lined up in the same format, ready for your accreditation visit, then this is a great way to kind of standardize the CV formats for all your faculty. The next thing that I want to highlight here is contact sharing. Now, this is a feature where if you want to mark a faculty as a school contact and share it with the students or with your site partners, then this feature allows you to do that. Um, when you do that, the, the basic details of the faculty, like their name, position, rank, email address will be shared with the stakeholders. And you can even um, check mark whether you only want to share it with the students or with um, the other faculty and staff body or with the site resources. And uh, you can even note, make notes that, you know, if students have difficulty with their volunteering activities, please contact this faculty or something like that. So all of those uh, can be done. Um, once you set it up for contract sharing, it's going to show up like this. So I'm going to breeze through these because we already covered these things. Um, but on the site resource page, this is how a shared faculty contact will show up. And on the student page, when they log in under school contacts, this is how it will show up for the students. If you mark this faculty as a shared contact. All right, so why don't I take a pause again and see if there are any questions related to um, a faculty login and building their profile and um, um, building up the three umbrellas of scholarship, teaching, and service. Any questions so far? No, Vishaka, no questions so far. Okay, how am I doing on the time? Okay. Um, all right, so then let's keep moving. The next section I'm gonna talk about, which is pretty much the rem remainder of this webinar, I'm gonna talk about how do you manage all your tasks as a faculty using the faculty uh, module? And uh, this is a huge section, obviously, because we are going to talk about what is your purview of features or privileges when you're associated with a course, when you're associated with an advisee, and when you're associated with a placement, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll go through each of those sections. So um, again, coming back to the dashboard, what you want to click on. So if you are a course manager or a course director and you have you are responsible for, say, managing five or six courses in the curriculum, then the easiest way to access those courses is by clicking on the courses tile when you log in. These are these are those courses or course offerings where you are marked as a course faculty. When you click on that, you're going to land up here. So I'm going to switch to the live system so I can show you all, all the aspects of this. So um, I'm going to click on the dashboard again and show you how to get to your courses. And I'm going to, so as a faculty, when I'm logged in, I can see I'm associated with seven courses. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to see all those courses listed here. Right. By default, you are going to land on course offerings tab. And that's because most of the times that's what you want to go to. You want to manage these courses. So this is the tab that you'll land in. But before we get into the details of how you manage these courses, I do want to spend a minute talking about what is course catalog and curriculum grid. So course catalog is basically a master list of all the courses that are offered in your program. You may not be associated with all those courses, but these are the base courses. These are not the course offerings because each of these courses may be offered 
again and again every academic year or for every cohort. So this is just the base course. So it's giving you the course number, the course name, whether this course is a didactic or a clinical course. So whether it requires a placement or not. Um, so this is more of an FYI for a faculty to know what does their entire curriculum uh, compose of, right? Um, on the other hand, this these are the course offerings. So these are the courses for a particular academic year and term and a particular cohort registering for it, right? And this the course offering is actually what you are helping manage in the program. If you also wanted to get a nice visual overview of the entire curriculum offered in your program, you would click on the curriculum grid and you can click on any particular curriculum. It could be for a particular academic year or a cohort, depending on how your administrator has set it up. And then you can see a nice view of, oh, what are the courses offered in uh, for this particular cohort in the three years? And uh, it is also divided by the terms in which these courses are offered. So it's a nice visual view. In addition, if you wanted to know the basics of that course offering, even though you're not directly associated with that course, you could click on any of these roles and um, you would get to see the about section of that course, the measure section of that course and so on, right? Uh, so you wouldn't get to see the details of the learning activities or the students because you are not directly managing that course, but you would get to read about what that course is about, its description and what it covers. So it's always good as a faculty to know about the other courses, even though you're not directly associated with them so that you can collaborate and cater your course content to complement the other courses in the curriculum. So that's what this does for you. So I'm gonna go back and I'm going to go back to course offerings because this is where the meat of your roles and responsibility and tasks happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one particular course and walk you through all the different things as a faculty that you can do with this course if you are a course faculty. So here on the right hand side, you will see your name associated with this course. If it's a team taught course, you will also see other faculty who have been given access to this course because they are also involved with this course. Okay, so then let's start with the top banner. You'll see the course name. Um, you'll see which academic year it's offered, which term, how many students are registered at a glance, right? Um, under course information, if you expand that, you'll see the about section, which is the top section here. You as a course faculty have full control over this. So you, you feel free to change the description of this course and all the information related to this course. You can even define the prerequisites, co-requisites, textbooks used, resources, policies, anything that you want to add for about this course can be added from here. Then you go to the next section, which is the course measures. These are nothing but your course objectives, your outcomes, your course goals. Um, We're gonna talk a lot more about these things in our next week's webinar. Um, so if you are a faculty that contributes in curriculum building and accreditation self-study and mapping, please register for next Wednesday's webinar on curriculum mapping, because we are gonna click down on these aspects in that webinar. So just briefly, this is the section where you would add your course objectives. The next is resources. As a course faculty, you would have specific resources for this course, like syllabus or course policy, attendance policy, grading rubrics, right? So you could populate all the resources for this particular course from here and even, even pick which audience do you want to share it with? So you can say, I do want to share the syllabus document with our site partners who host our students for placements. Or maybe you want to share the attendance policy with them or dress code policy with them. Or you could say, I only want to show it to my students so that when my student logs in, they, they can see the syllabus shared for this particular course, right? So when they click on this course, they will see this as a resource under that course. So um, as a course faculty, you can do that. 
then um, you can even build an event schedule and you can lay out lecture one talks about anatomy, lecture two talks about pathophysiology of the liver, whatever, you know, you can build out your lectures or session by session details in the event schedule. Then you can also view who are all the students who are registered for your course. If you see that a particular student should be there, but you don't see them here, or if a particular student has dropped out and you want to uh, remove them from here, you can contact your school administrator and get that done. Um, announcements. Announcements is another feature as a course faculty. If you want to make announcements uh, regarding the course with your students, you can easily do that by adding it here. You can, again, you get to choose whether this announcement is only for the students or you also want to uh, share this announcement with your site partner. So your um, your uh, site staff where the students are going for their placements. So it's up to you who you want to share with. You can also view the placements, right? That are part of this course and you can view the entire details and all the placements from this page. Now note that as a course faculty, you're not able to modify the placements that is done by your administrator, but you can definitely review and see all these placements. Right, you can even see how many students have completed attestations for these placements and you can follow up with them if they have not. All right, the last section here is that of learning activities. So if you uh, see here, learning activity has three sections. First is the setup. And as a course faculty, you can set up what learning activities do you want to activate for this course. I will not go into the details in the interest of time because there we just had a full webinar two weeks ago on how to set up learning activities and review learning activities in Exact Prism, where they talked in detail about how, how all these things work. So um, I'll not go into the details, but just give you an overview. So you can activate and deactivate your learning activities from here. You can view them, right? Uh, anywhere where you see this eye icon allows you to view that learning activity. You can edit it. Um, if you click on review, this is where you get to review the progress of those learning activities by your students. So. Um, you have your forms, your patient logs, your timesheets, and your time off. These are the four main learning activities that you can um, set up for your students. In the forms section, this is a summary. So it gives you all the forms or evaluations that have been activated for this particular course. And you can click on them and you can review them. You can even go to one evaluation at a time and look at the details of which students, where are they at? For example, this particular student has not yet started filling up this evaluation. Um, you can click on them and get to see the evaluation and even modify it, right? Because you are the course faculty, you have full control over the learning activities of this course. You can select an option, you can review it, you can, um, put in comments for the student or for the preceptor, whatever it is. It really depends on the kind of evaluation and the workflow, whether it's completed by the student or by the preceptor or by the faculty, or it goes from one person to another once it's completed. So it all depends on the kind of form, but you have full control over the learning activity for this course. You also have the functionality where you can distribute the form when the time comes. So if it's a midpoint evaluation or a final evaluation and you want to send it to the preceptors to get it reviewed because the, the midpoint date has come, you can do it from here. So all of these were covered in detail in the learning activities webinar. So I'll save us some time and um, I'll, I'll show you how you can review some of the other learning activities. So if you click on patient logs, again, you're going to see all the patient logs that are submitted by course. And here you can see that for this particular course, you can see all the placements uh, and for each placements, how many total logs were submitted. You can click on them and you can view the details of those logs. So anywhere you see a blue colored uh, word, blue colored lettering 
you are able to click that and go into the details. You can review this log. You can either say approve or not approve or needs attention. And you can even browse through all the for all the patient logs without actually going back to the screen. So you see these arrows here. These arrows allow you to uh, browse through all the records one by one without actually going back to the screen. So it saves you a few clicks here. You can also filter based on whether you want to review just the pending review ones or the approved ones or the needs attention ones. So all these filters are available. You can even click on the statistics and uh, get a feel of throughout all the logs logged by this particular student as part of this placement, um, what was the distribution um, based on demographics or based on the setting type or based on the decision making or gender that the student logged. So all those views are available to you. Similarly, you can also review the timesheets that are submitted by students by each course and within each course for each of the placements. So for example, over here, um, again, you'll see all the submitted um, timesheets and you can either click on them and approve them or send them back to the student with a note. So this is how you review some of your uh, learning activities for the course. Next, I want to actually um, go back. Um, go back to the courses and actually show you um, some of the reporting capabilities that you as a course faculty have. So these are comprehensive reports, right? Um, so they will give you a report in an Excel format. And the cool thing about these reports is uh, in the review section, you saw that you were able to review the learning activities segmented by a particular course. So at a time you could review learning activities for that course. But when you enter the reports, it actually allows you to pull the reports for a particular evaluation across courses, right? So if you wanted to see, for example, I'm going to click on this particular form raw report and you can select this report across courses. So I can say, okay, pull the data for not just one course, but all the courses that I am a course faculty for. And then I'm gonna say apply. And I will. I may want to select one or more settings or rotations and one or more settings. And uh, I may say, I want to review the data for all the statuses or just uh, pending school review or reviewed. So you can pick whatever you want and then uh, you can say generate the report for me. So uh, maybe I'll say student evaluation and generate the report. So this will give you all the data across courses. So you see, it will give you data for all these courses and it will export it in an Excel format. So um, for most of the time, you'll be involved with one course at a time, like you want to review the learning activities for that course and move on. But for a particular course, you might be interested in pulling a report across courses. So this feature would allow you to do that if you need to. All right. So that was about what uh, features are available for you as a course faculty. Um, so let me actually go back to the PowerPoint presentation and skip through some of these slides. We covered all these things on the live system. So I'm going to skip through these. Um, I think we didn't get a chance to, uh, yeah. We did the learning activities and we did the reports. Okay, so then as a course faculty, you can also contribute in the curriculum mapping process. So I'll quickly show you how to go about that. I'm going to click on the dashboard, right? So you're here, you are in the dashboard and now you want to, as a course faculty, say your curriculum committee chair or your director says, please go ahead and map your course objectives to the relevant standards. You would click on the mapping 
tile from the dashboard and you can click on your course from here. So let me go ahead and click on this course where I know I, I'm, I'm associated with this course and I can click on the course measures. And when I click on it on the right hand side, I can see uh, the standards that I'm supposed to map to and I can add the mapping. And I'll not go into the details of how to do the mapping today because we quickly show you how it's done and there you see the mapping. Um, we have a webinar next coming, coming Wednesday just focused on this curriculum mapping. So I'm gonna save us all some time. If you're interested in mapping as a course faculty, please uh, register for next week's webinar. So this is how you can, you know, uh, do the curriculum mapping and then also access curriculum mapping report. So there is a mapping reports tab that you can click on. And from here, you can actually visualize the curriculum mapping for your entire curriculum from here. So, and this is not limited to your courses because there is nothing that is that should be hidden. So you will get to view, you cannot modify the mappings from other courses that you're not associated with, but you can at least go and view all the mappings that are done, right? For, for the entire curriculum and for all standards. So um, I will uh, showcase this to you in next week's webinar that we have on mapping, but basically the functionality is if you are associated with a course, you can also map your curriculum to the standards for those courses. So we just went through these, right? So let me actually pause here. This was all about how do you manage your courses via PRISM, right? So let me take a brief pause here and see if there are questions that I can answer before we move on to your advisees, managing your advisees and then managing your placements. Uh, Vishaka, there are two questions. Mm -hmm. One of the question is, going back to previous topic, is there an area where faculty can add their own compliance items required by sites such as ACLS slash uh, immunization, etc.? Okay, thanks. That's a great question. And you are not the only one who's asked us that. We have been receiving this request for more, from more and more clients where they're asking if our product can support faculty compliance. So we, you all already are aware of that we do support a robust student compliance functionality. And you'll be glad to hear that we are currently building faculty compliance. So for now, um, faculty can upload their compliance documents in their profile section, right? But we do not have a dedicated compliance section for them or a dedicated way for the administrators to review faculty compliance that we are building, our product teams are building as we speak, and we are expecting it to be available to our clients in June. So um, we've heard you and we are actually building faculty compliance functionality. So when we do that, just like students, uh, the administrator can first define the documents that they want uh, the faculty to complete. So faculty compliance requirements. And then against those requirements, faculty will have a dedicated compliance section where they'll be able to upload and your administrators or exacts approved team will be able to approve those for you. So I hope that answers your question. It's Another, coming. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just saying the other question we had was regarding the cloning feature. Then mm -hmm. can we duplicate courses yet or do we have to create course uh, from scratch from year to year? Right. So again, that's a great question and we are currently working on it. So um, I'll break this question up into two parts. Um, today we have a cloning feature that can allow you to, um, you know, create the course offerings year over year. Um, and it's, it's a feature where you have to do it for your entire curriculum at once. Um, so all the courses, if you are at the end of academic year 2020 to 2023 and you want to 
recreate all the course offerings again for the upcoming year 2023-2024, then uh, that is possible today. But I think the bigger question is once those course offering shells are created, do you have to go ahead and set up all the learning activities and the resources and the course content again, or can that also be copied over without a lot of effort? And that's the part that we are currently working on. We're working on the feature where you'll be able to clone or copy your learning activities and apply them uh, in a go uh, for the next course offering. So just copy them from 2022 to and apply them on 2023. And then once you have applied them, if you want to make tweaks to them or change a few things here and there, you'll still be allowed to do that. So we are working on that and we are expecting that we'll be able to um, bring that some version of that to you uh, by this fall, I believe. But the product teams are already working on it. I hope that answers your question. Uh, any other question, Channi? Uh, we are good. No other questions. Thank you. Okay. All right. So then uh, we are doing good on time. We have another 29 minutes. So I'll keep moving. So now uh, that we saw what are the different tasks and functions that you can do as a course manager or a course director, the next uh, thing that we're gonna talk about is how are you gonna go about managing the activities related to your advisees? So if in your program you do, um, you know, um, have a system of advisor and advisee relationship, then this is something that would interest you. Um, so if, if I'm a faculty and I'm associated with six students as an advisor, then I would on my dashboard, I would click on the advisees section and it would land up, land me up on a grid that looks something like this. Now this grid is only going to show me those six or seven or 10 students for whom I am the course advisor. Oh, sorry, excuse me, not course advisor, faculty advisor. Um, and um, I will not see other students because we don't want to overshare. Right. So if I'm associated, if I'm serving as a mentor or advisor for these five students, then those are the only five students that I'll have access to. If you as a course, as a uh, advisor, do not see your advisees here, we would recommend contact your program administrator and ask them to check if they have associated you with the correct students or not. So that would be your first point of contact in troubleshooting this. If on the advisor side, they can see and they have associated you with more students, but you still cannot see them here, then please reach out to support. But most of the times what happens is uh, that from the administrator side, uh, the associations have been left out or have not been made because of which you as a faculty are not viewing the correct courses or the correct students on your end. So um, you could click on any of your advisees and it would land you up in their detailed uh, student page. And um, you probably are already familiar with our student page in our previous webinars. We had a webinar at the beginning of this, this series that focused totally on this uh, student uh, page and section. So uh, what you'll see here is a list of all the advisees on the left hand side and you can click on each of them and flip through them. Uh, for this particular student, you will see a number of tabs um, starting with academic info. Now academic info, I'm quickly going to switch to the live system so I can actually click on buttons and show you how that's going to look for you. So let me go to the dashboard and click on advisees and uh, click on a particular student. So the academic info is information entered by the school on the student. So if you click this pencil icon right here, what you're going to see is, you know, their enrollment details, the cohort or group that they belong to, and then the track that they belong to, their campus, all these things are entered by the school. Also entered by the school is whether the, what is the academic standing for that student? Are they experiencing academic probation? Are they decelerated? 
are they in good standing so by default every student that is entered in the system is marked as in good standing but from the school side you can always change that depending on how the student is performing in the curriculum or in the program um, as an advisor you do have uh, you do have uh, the privilege to change this in consultation with your administrator because you are playing an important role in advising the student and ensuring that they're well supported um, for their performance in the program you can also review uh, you can also make document upload documents on behalf of the student make notes uh, the notes can either just be internal for you and the administrator or they could be shared with the students on the right hand side here you will see your name as an advisor for the student you may see another faculty or staff name depending on the model that is used by the program some programs only have one advisor which they call the academic advisor other programs have two advisors one for the didactic phase and another one for the clinical phase so depending on the model that your program uses you may see one or more faculty and staff members associated with the student um, you will also get to see all the profile information entered by that student um, you can view the compliance a note here because of hipaa guidelines as an advisor you're able to see the status of their compliance on where they are in terms of completing or uploading all the compliance requirements but you don't actually get to click on them and view the actual documents so as an advisor you're not allowed to do that but you are allowed to allowed to help your program track the compliance uh, completeness by the student um you can also document all communications that you have with the student when you have your regular meetings with them um, and um, it's very easy you can add a communication from here the nature of communication the subject description the date um, if you wanted to schedule a follow-up with them you could do that here you could even upload a document so for example uh, a document of your discussion i know some when i was a faculty we used to have communication forms where we used to document you could either fill that up sign it and then upload it here or use this as your e-form it really depends on you um, all the completed communications that have been logged on will appear here similarly as an advisor you are also able to log interventions and the reason we have these two sections is for you to easily differentiate regular communication with the students and uh, special communications uh, because of their issues or um, any difficulties that they are facing in academia so that those would typically go under interventions it's just an easy way for you to segregate uh, your communications with the student and again you could click on the plus icon and give the details about the intervention you could even uh, you know when you are logging an intervention if it is related to a particular course or a particular uh, clinical experience or rotation you could note make a note of that over here as well you could even um, again set up a follow-up uh, when I used to meet with my advisees um, it would always help if we decided on when we were going to follow up on a particular uh, intervention next so if i asked a student to you know uh, revise certain questions or review certain topics for improving their performance uh, in a particular course i would say let's meet up again after the next midterm and see if you made any progress and we would we would chart out a date on our calendars and we would schedule the next appointment then and there itself so we do have a feature which will allow you to uh, set up a follow-up as well um, again all um, all the interventions that have been logged will show up here right now there's no data so you're not seeing anything but otherwise they would populate here you are also able to view the clinical coursework so all the placements that the student went through are listed here and you could quickly see which courses 
where did the student go which site did they go to you can click on view additional details and get a quick summary of all the activities that they that the student completed as part of this placement right you could um if you wanted to get a detailed view on their learning activities for a particular course you can click here and you can either review the evaluations patient logs timesheet or time off these are the four course activities that we offer today and uh, for each of these sections you will be able to review you, you will be able to view them uh, course by course so for this particular course you have all of these uh, uh, activities that the student has completed and uh, you would go about it this way okay so uh, that's about the learning activities um, you there are uh, filters over here that would allow you to filter on the course the particular setting or um, particular status and you could you could go about that from here um, you could also flip between students right from here so you don't have to go on the previous students grid to pick them you could directly go from here um let's see let me switch back to our presentation and make sure i have covered all the points that i intended to let's see we talked about all these sections mm. right now logging interventions and communications we went through this yep so we did cover all the um, advisee section and how you would go about um, managing your advisees. So let me take a logical pause here and see if there are any questions or comments for this section. No questions, Vishaka. All right, okay, keep moving. Um, the last part of this uh, webinar is about how do you manage your placements? now we do have student placements so if you are marked as a faculty on a particular placement that you manage or help oversee then you would click you would go on the dashboard and click on student placements and it would bring you on a screen like this now if you are a placement faculty and if you do not see a placement that you think you should have because you are serving as a placement faculty for that particular uh, placement, then again, you should contact your administrator and ask them to check your associations. As a placement faculty, you are able to review the learning activities that are completed by that student for that particular placement only. So not for that entire course, not for all the other students in that course, but just for that student, for that placement, for that course. So that is the purview of access and privilege that we offer as a placement faculty. So um, let me again switch to the live system. And I'm gonna click on these nine dots to go on the dashboard and then click on student placements. And this is the list of placements that I have. I'm going to click on this particular placement. So first of all, you see these two tags here. So this, uh, the first step will allow you to see by placements. So all the placements where you are marked as a placement faculty will appear in this grid. And the second way to look at it is by a course. So again, these are the, this is the same placements, but they have been anchored in a course, right? So if you wanted to review the placements where you are marked as a course faculty for a particular course, you would pick this view. So for example, if you click on a particular placement, you see this review here. If I click on here, I'm going to see um, all the learning activities for this particular placement that uh, Barrett has completed or is in the process of completing. Um, first of all, you see the placement details, um, where the student is going, what are the dates. Then you see the learning activities sectioned out so forms and evaluations patient logs timesheets and time off there's also a place where as a placement faculty 
you can log communications and it's very similar to what you saw as an advisor. So as a placement faculty, you can log the communications that you have with the student here and whatever you enter here shows up under that student's profile and for the administrators also to see and review. Similarly, at the bottom of the page, you have interventions. So if the student is facing any issues or if you want to log an intervention related to this placement, it could be with it could be um, any reason. You can log that intervention here and again, this intervention will start popping up under the student page intervention section for the administrators to see for the advisors to see. Okay, um, so then let's come back to learning activities. So you can easily as a placement faculty um, click um, on any of these learning activities. I'm gonna click here uh, and you can actually see the form, right? As a placement faculty, you do have um, privileges to view this form, add a comment, approve, the form, review it, all those functionality. Uh, all the functionality that I showcased for a course faculty are applicable here in terms of learning activity. The only difference is placement faculty can only review learning activities and access learning activities for this particular placement, not other placements of the course, not other students, just this course, this student, this placement. That's the only difference. Um, again, for patient logs, you could click on the patient logs. You could see the details of the logs. You could click on a log, review a log. If you are reviewing, you can say approve, or if it if if you say approve, it'll approve it. Then you could directly move on to the next log and review it so that you don't have to go back to the list of placements. You could go using these arrows on the left and right. Um, you could also filter based on just show me approved or needs attention or pending review status. You could also view the statistics. So this will show you nice uh, graphs as to what is the distribution of logs uh, entered by this particular student for this placement across uh, the different genders, across um, certain attributes like uh, decision making, ethnicity, gender, right? Um, depending on the kind of log that has been configured for your program, you will see all these attributes in this statistics page. You could also review it based on a rotation or on a setting. You could similarly also review timesheets, right? So you could click on see details and go ahead and a review, you could either do a bulk approve by clicking here, or you could go one by one and uh, click on it and then uh, go ahead and review it. You also have filters on date. So if you only want to review for this particular week, you can mention that here or a particular status. So, uh, so this is not approved. I can go ahead and say approve. Uh, are you sure you want to proceed? Yes. So this is how you would go ahead and review uh, the learning activities. The only difference here is that placement faculty uh, will not be able to view any learning activities across courses because their purview of data access is for a particular placement. Contrary to this, a course faculty can generate reports across courses for a particular evaluation or form. All right, so then let me go back to my PowerPoint. Let's see, let's ensure that I have covered all these points. Yeah, so then uh, that was about uh, placement faculty. The last two slides are about accessing the resources shared with you, right? So we saw how a program administrator can set up resources to be shared with faculty. So once they share those resources, you would see them here. So if you click on, if I click on, come to my dashboard, I can click on resources. And from here, I see 
the resources that are shared with me, travel reimbursement or travel policy, right? So um, this is where you would see the resources being shared with you and you can download all documents from here and access them. Similarly, the last section is how to get help. If you as a faculty are having issues with the system, you see this question mark right here. This is where you would go. And there are two ways, either you could access the help center from here, which is a repository of all the help documentation uh, that we have. You could also generate a support ticket. This is a recent enhancement that we have rolled out. You no longer have to go to your email and send an email to b4 at exact.com. If you're having issues, you can directly generate a support ticket from inside of the system from here. So just give a subject line. Um, ask a question or describe your issue here. And if you have a document that you want to upload, you can upload it from here or a screenshot that you want to upload with your issue, you can do it from here. If you have previously submitted support tickets, then you can track the status of those support tickets from here on the right hand side section. So we've made it a little easier for you to get help very soon you will also see a chat function that we are going to extend we have already rolled out the chat feature for our students and in the upcoming weeks we are going to roll it out for faculty as well so you will see a chat icon right here which will also allow you to quickly get help via a chat and an online agent um i guess that is it um let me see Yep, that was my last slide. So um, let's take any questions or any comments. We do have nine minutes left. No questions, Vishaka. All right. Any, let me uh, give a few moments to you. If you have any questions or com comments, please uh, do ask them or put them in the uh, question section. If you do not have any questions and comments, Thank you all so much for taking the time um, to attend this webinar. If you are involved in curriculum mapping, do sign up for our webinar next Wednesday, which is dedicated to curriculum mapping. And then we also have a series of webinars that we are rolling out, which are domain focused. Um, so watch out for those. If you belong to um, public health, um, speech language pathology, social work, we are um, orchestrating dedicated webinars to show you some features that we have developed just for your domains. We also have fireside chats that are open to all domains where we, we will be talking more about how we are evolving our product and so what are some of the pain points that um, we are getting from the clients and the ones that we are thinking about solving in the next few months. So look out for those announcements and webinars and sign up for all the webinars that you're interested in. Thank you all so much.